good evening friends my topic today is making sense of serendipity first step is to define what is serendipity the word the history behind the word and the phenomenon what is the meaning in our daily life serendipity is derived from the older name in sanskrit for sri lanka it was known as sinhala dwipa or swarna dwipa and the arab traders could not pronounce this name so it became serendip and the persian traders made it serendip ending with a p not with a b so this word did not exist in english language about 150 years back this word was invented by sir Horace Walpole, a novelist in Britain, and he read a Persian fairy tale, which is very interesting. There is a story behind Serendipity. The Persian fairy tale is about three simpletons, three princes who are not very bright. They are banished by the king to go away and accomplish something so that they can inherit the throne. This is a fairy tale. but it's very interesting because all basic is based on logic these princes by accident land up in the island of sri lanka and they are trying to find their way and they notice that there are footmarks on the trail which is leading to the next village or the next town and they also notice that there is an animal which is going in front of them and this animal seems to be a large animal because the footprints are quite deep three footprints are normal and the fourth one is shading it is slightly hazy so they start guessing about the animal and they notice a quite a good deal of uh, things about the animal in some time a trader comes running in panic and he asks them whether he has seen an animal so they start questioning him whether the animal is a she camel he said yes whether the animal is lame in the rear right foot he says yes whether the animal has two broken front teeth he said yes whether the animal is blind in the right hand side he said yes so they point to the trail and say that just run after your animal it is not very far from here in 10 minutes we'll get it this man finds the animal and he is waiting for the three princes to come to him and he calls the local cops and he gets them arrested because they had stolen the animal so they are taken to the local king who is in reality a very wise man and he asks them to explain that what made them be so particular about all these things without having seen the camel so they say that we noticed that the footprints were not equal the lame foot was giving hazy footprints we noticed that the grass was eaten only on the left side so the animal was blind in the right eye we noticed that some of the grass lumps were falling from the mouth of the animal because we found lumps of half eaten grass that means the front teeth were broken so the king was very happy and he appointed them ministers and they came back and happily settled back in their own <laughs> kingdom now horace walpole thought that these kind of coincidences which are known as happy accidents they happen in every person's life but it requires something more than luck something which we call logic the ability to translate that into action what in later years was defined by louis pasteur as the sagacity if you don't have the sagacity if you don't have the wisdom then all this marks are not useful to you the origin of the word is credited to horace walpole but there is an indian connection here this fairy tale in persian was written by hazrat amir khusro in new delhi he was a sufi saint uh, belonging to the nizamuddin uh, uh, saint nizamuddin uh, garana of sufism and this was translated into first armenian by armenian traders then into italian by italian traders then into french and from french it went to uk to translated in english and 
to his credit, Sir Walpole was the first person who thought that such a phenomenon needs a name. So he called it serendipity. Now serendipity is not only happy accident, it is much more than that, we will examine that. The invention of a theory of a gravitational force, thousands of apples have fallen on heads of people but nobody thought of gravity. Newton did that because he was sagacious, he was wise enough to understand that there is a force called gravity which is causing things to fall to the earth. The uh, next invention was Velcro which can be explained by serendipity. A Swiss engineer was taking his dog for a walk through a field and cockle birds which are known as gokru in Hindi started sticking to his pants, his jacket and the dog's fur. So he was minutely observing them. Why should cockle burr stick with minimum force say 10 grams and you have to pull it out with greater force like 200 grams. So he put it under a microscope and he saw that there were loops and hooks which were getting entwined. The loops were there on the dog's fur as well as the fiber of his jacket and the matching hooks were there in the cockle burr. So he imitated that and it took him 8 years. So we come to the next part of serendipity that just an accident does not mean anything. You have to put in lot of hard work to make it into a useful invention. Archimedes explained the, the law of displacement of water and the Eureka story is very familiar to you. Newton also is familiar to you. The invention of X-ray by an engine was also a completely accident because he, it was accidental in nature because he was trying to find out something else. It's like Christopher Columbus trying to find India and landing up in America. So there's a story behind that also. Rengen actually was more interested in development of a CRT, the cathode ray tube, which the earlier generation of the computers and the older TVs used to have. This was something he was very, very much interested in establishing the physical laws behind that. But he suspected that there is some, some kind of radiation coming from that. And there was a screen at the end of the lab which started fluorescing. So he put his hand in between and he saw the shadow of his hand on the screen. That is the invention of X-rays. Similarly, penicillin was invented accidentally by Sir Alexander Fleming. He put a tiny glass dish with a lot of mold, a kind of fungus around bacteria. And the bacteria were multiplying so fast that within few hours they would have doubled their number. He went to France for a holiday. When he came back, he saw that the multiplication of bacteria had stopped. Rather than multiplying, it completely stopped. So he invented penicillin out of that fungus. And today, many of us are alive because of penicillin. Looking at the ancient unrecorded inventions like organized farming, Invention of fire, invention of wheel, invention of metals, important metals like iron and copper, invention of glass, these are all completely accidental. The most important here is invention of fire. It is said by experts that fire was invented when dry twigs of trees were rubbing against each other and sparks would fly. If there is a wind, there will be a forest fire, which happens even today. So somebody who was very observant took two twigs and started rubbing. Of course, the surface temperature goes up. So if you have something which catches fire very fast, like dry grass or straw, it can happen. Glass was discovered by Egyptian sailors who were stranded on an island. At night, they lit a bonfire of dry twigs. In the morning, they found lumps of glass. So they understood that the sand has been converted into glass. So this was completely accidental. This is a Typical example of serendipity, there is a photograph of a beautiful bird which the photographer himself was not aware of what, the, what it is. It turned out that the bird in the background is far more important than the object of the photograph. This has happened recently in uh, some fish market in Pakistan about 15, 20 days back. One large fish, 5-6 feet in length, was being sold very cheaply and one Explorer couple from New Zealand 
who happened to be biologists, they came and they saw and they were horrified to see it was a seal cant. A seal cant is a sea animal, which is not a fish, but it went extinct 65 million years back. So when they saw it alive, it set biology on its head. So this is how knowledge helps. You may come across accidents which mean nothing to you, but if you have the knowledge and the wisdom, then that can be a world-changing discovery. There are types of serendipity. Number one is purely accident, as in case of uh, Columbus finding uh, America. A prepared mind is very much necessary, like uh, Louis Pasteur said. The dogged pursuit, as in case of Thomas Alva Edison, who conducted 50,000 experiments to find out the tungsten fiber, which could be used as the filament for a lamp. And uh, after that is the sagacious uh, perception. If a phenomenon does not mean much to you in scientific terms, then it will not do you anywhere. Again and again, people will keep coming across that accident, but it will not result into any useful happenings. The planned serendipity. It is said that all the minerals that exist, most of the minerals in the last 100 years have been found through planned serendipity. It is known that wherever you find ores of gold or silver, some amount of platinum is associated with them. So this is planned serendipity. If I know that near Udaipur, by mining here, if I am likely to get gold and silver, I will also get platinum. Learning from failed experiments. Arthur Fry invented, he tried to invent the super glue, but he failed. The kind of glue he invented was not effective. So he would stick papers and the papers would come off after some time. He forgot about it for three years. He had a roommate who was a singer in the church, he used to play the violin and sing in the church. And he found that the hymn book would automatically turn the page because of the wind or because of the fan. So he put this failed glue and he found that the paper could be stuck and it could be removed without damaging the paper. So today we use it in the form of stickers which we keep on the refrigerator. They are made from this failed glue, but it became Somebody invented this, but the use was found by somebody else. That also very happened. The synchronicity is one related term with uh, serendipity. Synchronicity means simultaneous inventions like oxygen being discovered at the same time in Germany and in Sweden. Or the more familiar example is the theory of evolution by Sir Charles Darwin, who was working in Tasmania near Australia. At the same time, Wallace was working in UK and Sir Darwin, when he came about, came to know about the simultaneous discovery by Wallace, he graciously in, mentioned him as the co-inventor. So we have seen Velcro. Similarly, vulcanization of rubber was accidentally discovered by um, Goodyear, Charles Goodyear, and he, he had tried 1,000 different combinations, but he could not improve the quality of rubber, which was coincidentally brought back from the new world by Columbus himself. Rubber was just a toy. They used to make a ball and throw it on the ground, it would bounce, but it did not have any practical use. Vulcanization gave it the practical use. Discovery of Teflon, all of us are familiar with the slippery substance Teflon, was completely accidental when somebody working on the refrigerant type gas like Freon, some accidental opening of a valve resulted in formation of powder, which was very slippery. Again, somebody else found the use for that. Discovery of Viagra, it was meant to control the blood pressure in aged patients, male patients, but it accidentally gave them erections, and today it is used for something else. This is a neat diagram explaining how serendipity can be useful. First is the first event is the prepared mind. Second is the accidental happening or the unexpected event. After that, recognizing the potential that this can be used for something. Fourth is seizing the moment, what is called carpe diem in Latin. If you don't seize the moment, then there is no point in any discovery. Then you have amplifying the effects and finally, Evaluating the effects. 
today accidental discoveries are taking place it's not it's not that designed experiments are going to lead to correct results many accidents are very important in fact more than 1000 inventions in medicine and anatomy have been completely accidental the chart we saw was made by scholars who have based their findings on nicolas uh, nisim nicolas tale who was an expert in marketing he has observed that the nature of uncertainty unpredictability and randomness is number 1 number 2 is how we get fooled by number 1 generally the unpredictable nature fools us that we are on the wrong track how why we don't seem to learn from it human race has not learned much from serendipity happening for thousands of years my presentation here is focused on that young people should be more aware of the serendipity and last is how we can it is possible to use serendipity in your daily life the fact that you meet someone and that that becomes your friend becomes your lover your wife your spouse your consort whatever is all important to you in your later life so maximizing the chances of encounters meeting strangers attending parties going to groups art forums science forums these are the ways to maximize serendipity at level 4 and then tawaib also recommends the apelles trial of strategy this is a beautiful story about a roman painter apelles who was trying to paint a horse with foam coming out from its mouth and he tried and tried again but he could not show foam ultimately he got so disgusted that he took the sponge which he was using for creating the effect and he threw it at the painting and automatically the print became foam and he, he fell in love with his own painting so this is how uh, sometimes uh, accidents can lead to masterpieces also this principle is used today in psychology in fact maximum number of papers research papers are written on serendipity by psychologists and psychiatrists and behavioral scientists because this is completely interrelated with human life and how to improve your life based on that the german scientist kekule solved the problem in an epiphany he saw a dream when he was awake neither completely asleep nor awake this is another hint einstein has left behind lots of mystical statements which can be given interpretation which only very sagacious mind could be do and lastly let me assure you that much more can be done it is up to the young people to put their minds to this thank you very much for your attention